Miami's first preseason game was unsurprisingly ugly with players on both sides out of the lineup, but there were key moments and players that stood out. Is the Heat's big lineup sustainable? Whose stock is up or down? What did we see that will matter in the regular season? We'll break it all down from FTX Arena on today's Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked on Heat, your daily podcast covering all things Miami Heat. Live from FTX Arena, I'm Wes Goldberg here with Dave Rumel. However, you might be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or your favorite podcast app. Thank you so much for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. We're going to ask some questions about whether or not some of the performances and the things we saw even matter in this first preseason opener, and then we're going to get to our stock watch later in the show. But we have to begin with the main story, David, on a night where there was no Jimmy Butler, no Victor Oladipo, and no Gabe Vincent. Eric Spolster decides for a test run to take the Bam Adebayo and Omer Yurtsevin front court. So we got a starting lineup of Omer Yurtsevin at center, Bam Adebayo at power forward, with Caleb Martin, uh, Kyle Lowry, and Tyler Hero filling out the wing. Uh, what were your what, what, did, what was your takeaway from our first kind of look at an extended minutes of a Bam in your front court? Well, as Eric Spolster confirmed in the post game, it was a little up and down. There were some positive moments, some bad to- some bad moments as well, and perhaps the worst possible night for to for them to roll out the big lineup. Considering yeah. Minnesota's lineup had, I mean, was without Rudy Gobert, without Carl Anthony Towns, so they were going with a smaller lineup that I think was not as good, especially for Omer Yurtseven, who picked up foul trouble. He was in foul trouble throughout the whole night. And as much as he showed some flashes here and there, I don't think he was able to adjust defensively without being able to go up against a tr- more traditional big alongside Gobert there. So that, those are my takeaways, is that if there were some things there that you saw that you go, huh, that was pretty good. Like there was that one particular play where Bam was able to find an open Omer Yurtseven from the corner, he was able to knock down a three, that stood out. That's, that's the positives. Aside from that, though, Omer's foul trouble. There were moments there where they lacked communication. Bam spoke after the game that that's something they definitely need to improve on, being able to communicate where to find positioning on offense and defense. That was really, really choppy tonight. Bam and Yurt played 18 minutes together last season in total. That's not a lot of time. No, and not. it was in time that hardly even mattered. This is going to be a learning curve. And that was my biggest takeaway from watching them on the court together. It looked clunky because it's supposed to be clunky. Right. They talked about some of the things that they had to adjust for. And the main thing, and you mentioned it with Spo, talking about the spacing. Right. You could just see as they would go down the court, whether or not it was Bam in the middle of the floor, Yurt in the middle of the floor, whichever one had the ball in the middle of the floor, the other one was trying to find ways to just be not in the way. Right. And and there was just weird clunkiness because now you have another player who's supposed to be the fulcrum of this look just kind of trying to not get in the way instead of playing his own game. And so you've got a player who can't just go down the court and do his own thing. and He kind of has to have his head on the swivel and be like, okay, where's the other center on the court? And then I have to adjust, and then I can kind of get to my stuff from there. It was kind of cool when it did work, right? We saw a moment, like you said, where Yurt was passing into Bam, Bam stepping into uh, uh, long-range jumpers and things like that. There's there's signs that it could work. Defensively, it still looked clunky, too. But um, this is obviously something they're taking for a spin. Eric Spolstra talked about that after the game. He, he was saying, like, look, this is the time to test drive it, right? right? They worked on it a lot in training camp. They're working on it a lot tonight. Like I said, 18 minutes total last season. Bam played 25 minutes. Omer played uh, 27 minutes. I would probably, like, guesstimate half of each of their minutes were played with the other one on the court. Yeah. So we're already starting to approach their total time last year right. in one game. Um, I asked Omir Yurtsevin about this in the locker room after the game, and I asked him what kind of rules they had in place, and he basically confirmed what I had asked him. When, for example, Omir Yurtsevin, or let's say let's Bam Adebayo gets the ball on the floor, Omer, in the middle of the floor, Omir Yurtsevin's job is to immediately sprint to the corner or go above the break and create space. So you're starting to see some of that play out, which I think it's interesting that Eric Spolstra is putting those rules in place now and spending so much of training camp in the preseason establishing those rules. Regardless of what it looked like tonight, David, I think we're going to see a lot more of this going forward because you wouldn't spend so much time trying to figure it out and trying to test drive it if you didn't have any intention in actually using it. Well, but Spo also said that we probably wouldn't see it for such a prolonged amount of time. Like the, the, the amount of minutes that they played together 
probably would not be out, on, you know, during the regular season with Jimmy in, with you know, a Victor Oladipo in, etc. That maybe we wouldn't see it so much. But you, you seem to think that this is going to be the norm moving forward, or at least an iteration of this Heat team that they're going to see spot minutes together from game to game. Yeah. You think that's a regular, a, I, a regular occurrence? I don't occurrence? think they'll start this lineup. I just don't think it's versatile enough, and I don't think it's their best five players. I think Caleb Martin is a better player than Omer Yurtsev, and I think that Spo will lean towards starting his best five guys. Um, but I think we're going to see minutes of it. I think we will. I just don't see what the other option is. Like, you're, I, even if you start Caleb at the four and Bam at the five, which I think is, and you and I agree, that's probably your opening night starting lineup, uh, there's just going to be so many more minutes throughout the game that you're going to have to find other answers. You're going to have to throw different looks. That's the other thing about Spo. He likes, he likes certain things. Like, in that starting lineup, he wants versatility, he wants spacing, he wants, the, he wants speed, he wants switchability, but he also wants to show opponents different looks he wants to show them the zone or whatever it might right. be and i think this season he might want to show them some bigger lineups he talked about that after the after the informal scrimmage on monday night about hey you know you're going to see the speed lineup you're going to see the big lineup um i just think they know they already know how to do the speed lineup those things are come natural and they talked about that after tonight's game like bam and, and spo each talked about it what doesn't come natural is what this is the omega it's going to bam out of bio pairing so that's why i think they're working they are investing a lot of time in Omer, though. Like, yes. he has supplanted Dwayne Dedman in the rotation. I think he's going to be getting significantly more minutes than Dwayne at this point moving forward. What we've seen from Omer, I think it's polished, just particularly offensively. He shows a nice touch around the basket. He shows a long-range jumper. He has more potential at this point, and I think they're really investing a lot of time because this could be a legitimized weapon moving forward, and I think that's why they're continuing to develop it now because they see something in Omer and they see the pairing. He could be part of the young core. We talked about this after the Tyler Hero contract extension. This is your core moving forward. Yeah. Perhaps year seven fits into those plans as well. He's playing on a contract year. Like if you're if you're gonna try to figure out what he is, this is the year to do it. You kind of only have this year to figure it out because then you have to make a decision this upcoming summer. I know it's just preseason. We're getting way ahead of ourselves talking about free agency next summer, but that has to come into play. I'm with you. I, I don't know what Yurtsevin and Deadman. Maybe Deadman is more of a band backup, and Yurtsevin is more of a backup power forward option. Where yeah. obviously, when you put him in the game, Bam slides over to the forward, and Yurt's playing the five. I wonder if there's minutes for both of them. Yeah. That kicks out Haywood Highsmith probably out yeah. of the lineup. He had a nice night tonight. We'll get to that later, I'm sure. But um, what do you think of Bam's comments about when Bur uh, when Omer's out there? You want him to play the seven feet tall. Like you right. want him to be able to block shots, be that big obstruction in the middle to impact offense. Yeah, I'm glad you bring up the defense event because that's the other part too. I thought Yurtsevin's defensive night was very up and down. Uh, I asked Bam about what changes at, uh, defensively for them when he's at the four and or when he's at the five and Omer Yurtsevin is in the game and he's at the four. And he basically said, you know, when he's at the five, it's what we all expect the Heat to be. Switch everything, period, end of story. That's how you do it. Um, and that, you know, it was nice to hear that too given that P.J. Tucker's no longer on the team, they're still just going to switch everything with Caleb Martin in there. Um, but with Omer, he said basically the the, jo the job of the defense is to funnel everything towards Omer Yurtsev. So Omer yeah. Yurtsev is going to play drop coverage, so hang out by the basket, and you've got Bam Adebayo and whatever other perimeter players are out there funneling things towards Omer Yurtsev. Now, that make, that puts a lot of responsibility now mm -hmm. on Omer Yurtsev. The best case scenario is it works, and now Miami has a element of rim protection and rebounding that didn't have last rebounding, year. Rebounding, yes. Right? Rim protection, I'm not so sure about. That's what I bet. Like, he, Omer Ritzman wasn't showing a whole lot of rim protection tonight. I thought, we could talk about his defense. I thought it was it was, it was pretty tough tonight for him. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was a step slower. Uh, sometimes when he was dropping, he dropped a little bit too much and gave right. too much room to a scorer there who was able to attack the rim with impunity. So not as much of a rim protector as you'd like. Not able, at this point yet, to utilize his full frame, his full length, in an effective way to challenge guys that are driving to the rim there. So I think it'll come in time. I think he's starting to work towards it. Spo spoke about how the, the amount of work that he's done he being going through what with hundreds of pick and roll drills all the time so that he can get more comfortable so i think we're going to start to see more and more improvement if he gets uh, increased playing time which we do think he will but for now i just i think it's still very much a work in progress so he's not going to start he's going to play more and he's going to have to continue to show progress throughout the rest of the season uh bam played 700 minutes two seasons ago with myers leonard kelly olenic and that whole group i think we're going to see something closer to that as opposed to the 36 minutes he spent last year playing next to one of your seven or dead minute and and to your point i think we're going to see a lot more of it won't start we'll see more of it but right now it's clunky they are on the steepest part of the learning curve 
But that's what preseason is for. Preseason's for a lot of things, and we've got a lot more to glean from the preseason opener here on the Locked On Heat. We're going to talk about what actually matters from the preseason opener next. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Tonight, I'm taking Luka Doncic to score more than 26.5 points, LeBron James to have more than 7.5 rebounds, Kevin Durant to have less than 6.5 assists, and Steph Curry to have more than 3.5 made three-pointers. I'm talking about prize picks, daily fantasy made easy. And all you have to do to play is pick two to five players, and if they'll score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10x your money on any entry. And the best part, no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projection totals. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, not just the NBA, but also the NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. I didn't even know there were more sports than that. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. It's safe, and they are fast withdrawals. Currently operating in over 30 states and Canada. Mm. Download the Prize, uh, Prize Picks app or go to PrizePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can re- receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code LOCKED ON at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks. Daily fantasy made easy. You got pickleball. Pickleball, that's right. Thank you again for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you check out the ultimate pro basketball preview starting October 10th. A six episode of Stravaganza to get you ready for the NBA season. The local team experts and the NBA insiders of the Lockdown Podcast Network and Odyssey all combining into one ultimate NBA preview starting October 10th. Search for the ultimate pro basketball preview 2022. On your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast, David, we are going to play a game called Does It Matter? So I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and the question is going to be, does it matter? And then you'll answer that question. So the first one, does it matter that Duncan Robinson missed all six of his three-point attempts in this game? No, it doesn't. Uh, I think he's, you know, we know what he's capable of. We know what kind of a shooter he is. My concerns about Duncan weren't on the shooting. It was more about the defensive issues because I think those were certainly a problem. Uh, the shooting, look, he's going to get to his spots. He's going to find his comfort, his rhythm in the rotation. We saw him the night before. Uh, look comfortable, look like he was going to be a productive player, maybe regain his confidence, look more fluid. So, no, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Do you? No, I don't care that he, he went over 6 uh, tonight from three-point range. Um, I do care, like you, that he had four personal fouls and he was a minus 10. Um, and my issue with Duncan, and this has always been the issue with Duncan Robinson, is if that shot is not going in, then what is he giving you? Right. On a night where there was no Jimmy Butler, Vic Oladipo, and Gabe Vincent, and on a night where it was a preseason and it does not matter, there was no risk at him being pulled out of the rotation. They were just going to let him shoot his way through it. You would hope that the preseason and then the start of the regular season does not begin the way that last regular season started, and then that there is a, oh boy, here we go again kind of feel to the beginning of Duncan Robinson's season, because that's the last thing he needs. It's one preseason game. You don't want to start going down that path right now, and I, and I think it is early to start going down that path, but it's just something to monitor. So, no, I don't think it matters, but it is something that I'm watching because they need him to make shots. They need him to make shots. Yeah, that's right. Um, does it matter that Omer Yurtson fouled out? Six fouls in 27 minutes. Now, that's a little bit more concerning. Uh, again, like Duncan, I think there's a rhythm there that he just doesn't seem to have on the defensive end. He just doesn't seem to know exactly where his place is, and he does not have the foot speed to be able to compensate there. We saw quick reflex. There are players out there that can compensate for you know their lack of understanding where they should be or the, on the floor because they've got the reflexes, they've got the timing down. Omer does not have that right now. And if he's going to be earning more minutes, if he's going to be playing more and showing that deft touch around the basket, he's a big, he's got the rebounding skills. We've seen him be able to stretch the floor. And apologies for all the background noise, but there's nothing you can do as FTX Arena is getting torn down after tonight's game. <laughs> Having said that, though, Omer's foul troubles are concerning to me because yeah. he has to be able to eliminate those if he wants to continue to gain more and more playing time. He's probably not playing 27 minutes every night, uh, but that doesn't really matter. If, if he's fouling at that rate, 
that at that frequency, right. that's going to be a problem because if you're fouling early in the games, then you're putting the other team at the line. Right. Uh, and you're getting your you're putting your own team into the potential bonus situations that yep. you don't want to be in, and that's going to be a concern for the Heat uh, if he's fouling that much. And basically, like we saw with Duncan Robinson last year, if you foul that much, you basically become unplayable. And if Omer Yurtsevin really is this important to Miami's rotation this year, then you don't want him being a foul issue. You don't want him fouling other players and setting to the line at that rate. So yeah, I do think it's going to be a concern. It's something he needs to work on. He really needs to pick up on the foot speed. It starts, you, you foul a lot with your arms, but it starts with the, the legs. It starts with the feet. It can get a little bit quicker, especially laterally and not get caught with his hand in the cookie jar when he's trying to come out and meet a guy out in the perimeter, that's going to help uh, and go along. Consider way. Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, and D'Angelo Russell were all out tonight for Minnesota, right. and they still managed to take 35 free throws tonight. Not great. Not great. Uh, does it matter that Bam Adebayo took 17 shots? Absolutely. I think this is the trend moving forward. Again, no uh, Victor Oladipo, no Jimmy Butler out there. You know he's going to be taking a ball. Um, you know, we've seen Jimmy understand when to back off offensively. He doesn't always have to take shots. However, I like Bam's aggression moving forward. One of those shots, three-pointer as well. He looks comfortable. He looks like he was ready to be the main offensive player, the main scorer for this team, and it worked out. I love it. I love seeing the intensity of the aggression from him. It's everything he fans have wanted over the last couple of seasons. I love that he's taking 17 shots in 25 minutes. If, right. if he played his normal amount of minutes, I can't he would have gotten past 18. <laughs> so uh, my only concern, on a night without Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry, obviously you didn't have those other uh, primetime shot creators that you usually play with. He had to create a lot of shots for himself. And right. I know that Heat fans want to see that a little bit, and obviously you do want to see him create a shot, but let's remember what Pat Riley said at the end of last season. It wasn't just 15 shots. It was 15 quality shots. And to me, I would say out of the 18, even though he, or 17 tonight, even though he was 9 of 17, I would say probably 10 of them were really quality looks, and 7 of, seven of them were kind of forced. You would like to see the force looks about cut in half at least and get more quality looks. But again, with Lowry back, with Jimmy in the lineup, you'll have more guys being able to create for Bam so that he can step into those threes, step into those mid-range jumpers, and then obviously roll to the rim and just finish with dunks more often. So yeah, I love what we're seeing, just as general aggression levels. We like the tone that he's trying to set early. Does it matter that Caleb Martin had 12 points on five of eight shooting, two of four on three pointers, three rebounds, and two assists in 23 minutes? Hell yeah, it matters. Caleb Martin looks fantastic. We, we've heard from him consistently since we've talked to him at Media Day. Everything we've heard out of training camp and now going to the preseason, their first game of the preseason, Caleb looks comfortable in his role, starting at the four. He's handled it defensively. He did a fantastic job overall. Fluid, making impact plays, looking for his shot. The mid-range jumper, I don't think we could count on one hand the number of mid-range jumpers he took all of last season. He took two of them tonight. Uh, it just seems like that's a part of his repertoire moving forward. He's uh, changed his shot a little bit. Uh, there's less of a hitch than there was last year, even though he shot at a high level from three-point range. But he seems more comfortable. He's looking to take his shot. I think he's trying to do his best to continue to earn that contract, to earn playing time, and be impactful out on the floor. I love this performance tonight, and I think we're going to see more of it moving forward. One of Caleb's main priorities was making sure that he remained a 41-plus percent three-point shooter from what we saw in the scrimmage on Monday night and going 2 of 4 tonight. That seems to be the case, and I agree with your observation that you saw with the three-pointer. It looks smooth. It looks yep. great. He's continuing to work on it. I love Caleb Martin in this group. I am convinced that he should be the starter. I think Eric Spolstra is at the point where he's probably convinced. Let's start keeping account of how often Eric Spolstra calls Caleb Martin a glue guy, because mm. I think that might be a thing this season. That's, that's the terminology du jour, huh? Yeah. All right, nice. Does it matter, finally, does it matter that Miami turned it over 15 times in this game, 12 times in the first half? No, I'm going to say no. Again, preseason, you expect that kind of thing. Uh, it's something they're going to monitor. Spoke spoke about that after the game. He yeah. said they're going to continue to watch it. They want to make sure that they eliminate. But they, they kind of chalked up some of it or most of it to just preseason jitters, the cross court passes, you know, fumbling the ball a little bit. We saw Kyle Lowry, you know, Hall of Fame point guard, and he kind of bumbled the ball at times too. So I don't think it's going to be a concern moving forward. At least you hope not. I think a lot of that gets resolved with Jimmy on the floor and a little bit more consistency. But considering it's their first preseason game, I'm going to dismiss it for now. I, I'm going to keep an eye on it, however. I'm dismissing it, but looking ahead to the future and making sure that they don't continue to develop in this trend, considering how bad of a problem it was for them last year as well. That's it. And like you said, Spo talked about it. It's just something they want to monitor. A lot of the passes were you could chalk it up to a preseason. You could chalk it up to guys like 
uh, Marcus Garrett having to play 21 minutes, not throwing shade at Marcus Garrett, but on a night where you clearly you are, some of your top playmakers and ball handlers if it was an issue, especially in that second unit where they right. were going out there after Kyle Lowry and Tyler Hero both came out with the starting group. They were playing lineups of basically no ball handlers, right. no shot creation, and that's where you saw a lot of the turnovers start to come up. Um, so, yeah, I'm not as concerned, although I'm not concerned because of this game, but I was concerned coming off of last season about turnovers, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, stock watch up and down coming up next year on Locked on Heat. To help Heat fans get ready for the upcoming season, Official League, the fastest growing sports merch company, is launching an exclusive limited edition hat inspired by Miami Heat star Bam Adebayo and designed by viral artist NBA Paint. Only 100 will be available of each hat for purchase at officialleague.com and the new silhouettes feature a funny food character inspired by each player. Bam Adebayo is, drumroll, Ham Adebayo. And here's <laughs> even better news. We will be giving away a free hat to one of you. To enter for a chance to win a free Official League Ham Adebayo hat, all you have to do is leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and then email us a screenshot of that rating and review to LockedOnEat at gmail.com. But here's the catch. You only have until Bam Adebayo attempts at least 18 shots in a game. It's 17 tonight, so we were almost there. You almost lost your chance before he even started. <laughs> Once he does that, we're going to close entry. So get on it now. Email a screenshot of your five-star rating or review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify or both to LockedOnHeat at gmail.com for a chance to win a free official league Bam Adebayo hat. That's awesome. Stock up and down. We're calling the stock watch as we go through the preseason. David, I'll let you start. Where do you want to go? Uh, let's start off with stock up then. Let's uh, No, you know what? Let's start with stock down. Start we wanna, the yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Like exactly. All right. Uh, as far as uh, you know, players whose stock might be down, and again, the caveat that it's only a preseason game, the first game of the season, keep players on both sides missing, and you're not exactly sure what kind of consistency you're going to be able to build off this, but I'd have to say that Max Strew struggled a little bit. Uh, as a player who's clearly upset about not being in a starting line, or maybe not clearly upset, right. but clearly wanted to continue to earn starting playing time. He's on a contract year as well. He struggled a little bit. He couldn't seem to find his rhythm out there. Maybe part of those lineups that you had suggested before, where there wasn't a real legitimate ball handler. He was moving well. He looked like he was trying to make something happen, but he just couldn't get it together. One of eight from the floor, only two points for the night. Uh, a minus five uh, during his minutes out there. Just not really able to find any kind of a rhythm out there. I'm less concerned about Max Struess only because he is so, wait for it, ignitable. But uh, he had a nice moment where he ran a pick and roll with Bam. Is he a glue Bam guy, though? He's not, no glue guy, just ignitable. Um, I, I look for moments in preseason games where I could see something that was different than last year when you're talking about developmental guys, and I think Max Struess still qualifies as a young Absolutely. developmental kind of guy. And, when he's running pick and roll with Bam and you see him handling the ball a little bit more, that to me is what stands out. Defensively, I did not think he was a big uh, issue where there were a lot of glaring defensive issues were for Miami tonight. I'd have to actually go back and watch the film to confirm that, but nothing stood out to me on first to watch live. Uh, but I like, I just like seeing him handle the ball, running pick and roll, and nobody else could when you had so many ball handlers absent from tonight's game uh, and getting Bam out of bio on a lob because that's where I want to see Bam taking more of his shot attempts is at the basket, less of that mid-range stuff. So if you can make easy shots for him at the rim, uh, that's even better, and Max is able to do that. Uh, I'll go with the stock down. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Duncan Robinson. I know we just said that he, um, we're not concerned with the fact that he went over 6, but on a team that has so many guys battling, not just for a starting spot, David, but just for a spot in the night-to-night rotation, Duncan Robinson is still, I think, on the fringe of that. We're talking about 9, 10, 11, probably in that range, where he's competing with other guys who we're going to get to in a minute here whose stock is up. That, to me, is a concern. I think Duncan Robinson, right now, his stock is down. Yeah, no, I think there's no other way of putting it. Uh, you know, struggling from the floor defensively, making up foul trouble, not getting his shots going. I did see some aggression from him and putting the ball down, was able yes. to drive at least a couple of times to the rim. So maybe that's something, you know, we, we talked about it before. If he's not knocking down the shot, what's he able to do? Maybe he's making a more concerted effort to be able to put the ball down, attack the rim. He's got the size, he's got the touch around the basket. We'll see if that's going to be part of his offensive repertoire moving forward. I don't think there's any need to continue to bag on Duncan. I think he'll find a way to get out of this, but we'll see whether or not he's able to consistently build on it and get more playing time. You and I remain high on Duncan. One last stock down would probably be Omer Yurtsevin, right, yeah. who we already talked about. Let's move ahead to stock up. Whose yes. stock is up? Uh, I would say Tyler Hero. I think yeah. uh, he, he bounced back from an injury midway through the game. I thought he was going to be maybe out for a sustained period of time. Came right back after a timeout. Looked fluid. 
looked like he was just able to create his own shots using picks as well, you know, using the screen whenever necessary, but creating his own shot, looked fluid from the perimeter, uh, just felt more comfortable, absorbed contact frequently yeah. throughout the game, and I think that's absolutely a concerted effort from him as he's able to get to the line. I don't even know if he actually managed to, Oh, yeah, he did six of six from the line. Yeah. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want out of time. I asked Tyler here about it after the game in the locker room, actually. I said, hey, listen, getting to the basket, staying on your line, finishing through contact, is that something you're trying to do more of this preseason to show that you can do that? He looked me straight in the eyes and said, that's not something I'm trying to do. That's what I do. And that was it. So I was like, all right, cool. You, I guess when you're making $32 million a year, you could just talk like that. Not That's yet, fine. not yet. He's not able to buy Rolexes for all of us <laughs> That's yet. Right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead with uh, Haywood Highsmith as oh, my yeah. stock up. Uh, 18 minutes, 19 minutes tonight. He scored seven points, eight rebounds. Um, I, I loved everything I saw from Haywood yep. Highsmith. He is a guy who is uh, kind of on the up and up anyway, stock watch wise, since Las Vegas Summer League. Eric Spolstra talked a lot about him in post game. He was asked about it, uh, and, and specifically what it is that Haywood does defensively. Haywood Highsmith, his arms are so long, and it's one of the things I noticed today. He's probably got a seven foot wingspan, something close to that. I haven't checked it, um, but like this is a guy who could defend multiple positions. He's super switchy. Um, he can he can guard guys near the basket. He can guard guys out on the perimeter. Uh, Eric Bolster said that he probably thinks he's going to continue to grow into that frame that he should be standing at about 230. Mm -hmm. But right now he's closer to like 215, 220. And so if he can kind of put that weight on, even though during the regular season it's hard to put more weight on. Right. But if you're if we're talking about a, a developmental prospects and guys that they need, want to keep tabs on and continue to develop and help grow, I think Haywood Heisman qualifies yeah. as one of those guys. And, and I think based on what we're seeing, this is the guy I was mentioning talking about Duncan Robinson. 9, 10, 11, I think, in this rotation, it's very much up for grabs, and I think based on tonight, and based even on what we saw in Summer League, and maybe even what is being reported at a training camp, I think Haywood Highsmith's stock is very much up, and we should not count him out as maybe a factor in the rotation. No, absolutely. Uh, to watch him reminds me a lot of what we saw from Caleb last year as he was fighting for minutes. Impacting plays, diving to the floor, all over the floor, just running around, not, not, not like... Like, you know, without any kind of focus or anything like that. He was purposely moving around the floor, able to impact things defensively, looking to make passes around the, 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 the hoop. Just just an impactful player. Yeah. Uh, it was a high energy, high motor, and then a lot like P.J. Tucker as well, you know, being able to do everything that, he, that P.J. did last year. So I think we're starting to see shades of those two players in high spit. Uh, that he's able to continue to come in and make impact minutes out there, I think really speaks highly of his continued development, his willingness, his, his, his drive to become a, a more steady rotation player. So I really like what he saw from him today. Stock up also, Caleb Martin. Absolutely. We talked about him earlier. Bam Adebayo, his stock is up, and uh, I think that'll do it. Thanks again for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Remember to subscribe to new episodes of Lockdown Heat wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube or on Odyssey. Now make your second listen Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Josh Lloyd hosts the number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet. It's for free and it's available wherever you get your podcasts.